Hello, this is Zhang Wenbo from Basics Lab, Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Today, I will talk about the bisimulation equivalence or pushdown automata. This is a central problem in the area of verification. Today, I will concentrate on the complexity of the problem. It was proven to be Ackman complete. This is a joint work with Qiang, Huan, and Xian. Suppose we want to design the three colored traffic lights. A red signal, a yellow signal, and a green signal, and then come back to red signal. This is what we want. Here A1, A2, and A3 are actions. You can interpret A1 as the things you need to do to turn off the red light and turn on the yellow light, similar with A2 and A3. Here is another system. The difference is that it has two yellow signals. From the red signal, it can choose the next step non-deterministically. For example, we can choose the left one and then go to the green signal. This system also fulfills all the functions of traditional signal lines. After doing a same action, it can go to a same state. That's the idea of bisimulation. If a system can do an action, another system can do the same action and then they go to the same state. Usually in the process of software developing, the product manager builds something called specification. It describes the behaviors of a system. Then the engineering gives an implementation. The question is, does the implementation meet all the requirements of a given specification? The bisimulation equivalence describes such an equivalence relation. After doing the same action, the two systems can go to the same state, then they can be regarded as equal. Unfortunately, the bisimilarity problem for Turing machine is undecidable, like many other problems on Turing machine. So a nature question is, can we reduce the capacity of the system to make the problem to be decidable? This talk will concentrate on the problem for pushdown automata. Pushdown automata is a well-known system. It is a type of automata that employs a stack. There are some different but equal definitions of pushdown automata. Here we give a simple example to help you to get familiar with our conventions. We use P to denote a state, and X is a stack symbol. Now the configuration is PX. The current state and the top stack symbol can decide the next transition to take. Suppose we have such a push transition from state P to Q. It pops the st uh, stack symbol X and then pushes to stack symbol X. After performing the transition, the new configuration will be QXX. And we can introduce a pop transition to pop a symbol X and then come back to state P. It should be noticed that we do not emphasize the start state and the final state, since here we regard PDA as transition graph generators instead of language acceptors. Now we can complete the generated transition graph. It is an infinite graph. In this example, QX, QX is not bisimilar with QX, where QX is bisimilar with QXX.
Here is a review of the achievements related to this problem. In 1998, the problem is proven to be decidable. Then in 2002, an exponential time hardness lower bound is given. 11 years later, the lower bound is updated to tower hard. And recently, the problem is proven to be in Ackman. It is the first complexity upper bound. And we will show that it is actually an Ackman hard comp uh, problem. So the problem is Ackman complete. Another related topic, which is very important, is the work on the bisimulation equivalence of first order grammar. Push down automata are strictly weaker than first order grammars in the sense of bisimilarity. So the Ackman hardness of first order grammar cannot be applied to push down automata directly. The bisimilarity problem for first order grammar is same with a weak bisimilarity problem for PDA, where all actual transitions are deterministic. The weak bisimilarity means if a process do an internal action, the other process need not to do anything to simulate the transition. And our work will extend the work on first order grammar. And we make a modification of the Ackman hardness proof by trying to avoid introducing apple transitions. In the remaining time, I will show the proof of our result. We start with an Ackman hard problem. This problem is a coverability problem of reset counter machine. The reset counter machine consists of a set of states, a set of counters, and a set of transitions. It can operate on counters as part of performing a transition. There are three kinds of operations, increase by one, decrease by one, and reset. Now we can define the coverability problem. Given an initial configuration and a target configuration, we want to know if there is a path from the initial configuration to a configuration that can cover the target one. Here, cover between configurations means they are in the same state and every counter is larger than the corresponding counter. In this example, the initial configuration is in state S1 and every counter values 1. From state S1, it can perform a decrease operation on counter 2 and go to state 2. And then perform an increase operation on counter 1 and go back to state 1. Next, it performs the operations on the cycle Counter 2 is reset to 0, counter 1 minus 2, and counter 3 plus 1, and then come back to state S1. Last, it can perform a reset operation on counter 2, and then it reaches a configuration S3002, which covers the target configuration. Before moving to the reduction, let's see a game characterization of bisimilarity problems called the bisimilation game. The game is played between two players, attacker and defender. Attacker tries to prove a pair of processes are not bisimilar, and the defender tries to prove the other side. In each round, attacker can choose a process and a, a transition and the defender responds the same action from the other process. Defender will win if she never gets stuck, otherwise attacker will win. 
the game can help to build an intuition of the bisimilarity problem. If two processes are bisimilar, then in the bisimilation game, defender has a winning strategy. Otherwise, attacker has a winning strategy. In the remaining time, I will introduce a reduction from the coverability problem of reset counter machine to bisimilarity problem of pushdown automata. There is a polynomial time reduction. However, for simplicity, the reduction showed in this talk is an exponential time reduction. It is enough for the result since uh, the Ackman complexity is very large and uh, it is closed under exponential time reduction. With the reduction, we can conclude that the bisimulation equivalence of PDA is Ackman complete. Here are some key points of the reduction. First, every operations on counters will be recorded on both of the two PDA processes. Second, the state of reset counter machine will be recorded on the stack top. The next one is important. Our reduction will guarantee that the invalid decrease operations are not allowed. Here invalid means you are trying to perform a decrease operation on counter which value is zero. If it's zero, you cannot decrease it. And the last, as I have said earlier, we will avoid introducing F2 transitions. That's the main difference with the proof of previous work on first order grammar. Let's revisit this example. The initial configuration is S1 and a triple one. First, we initialize the PDA processes by the initial configuration. If a counter value is x in the initial configuration, we put x number of increase symbols in the stack. This may take exponential time, but it does not matter. The state is recorded on the stack top. We introduce a pair of stack symbols. We use the left bullet and the right bullet to distinguish them. They are the only difference of the two processes. Then we will record every operations on the stacks of both of the two processes. So from the stack, we can recover the configuration of the reset counter machine. The initial state is S1. Suppose it performs a decrease operation on counter 2 and go to S2. Then we can introduce a pair of pushing rules to record the operation. And for the next transition, we can introduce another pair of pushing rules. So far, everything is going well. But now the second counter is zero. So in the reset counter machine, the transition to S2 is not allowed in the current state, where the transition to S3 is allowed. So we need to do something to ensure that attacker cannot choose a transition to S2 in the current state. Recall that we have introduced a pair of pushing transitions for every rule in reset counter machine, but we should restrict the use of the transitions corresponding to the decrement operation. So we first remove them. And here we use a technique known as defender's forcing. Let's concentrate on the transition graph. Attacker wants to prove P and Q are not bisimilar. In the game, among these five transitions labeled A1, attack has only one choice, 
that is the transition from P to R1. If attacker chooses other transitions, defender can go to the same state and win the game because identical processes are always best similar. After attacker transfer to R1, defender gets control over the game. Defender can choose from R2 and R3. If defender chooses to R2, then since R1 and R2 can do action A2 to a same process P1, so attacker is forced to choose action A3, and the game continues with P2 and Q2. Similarly, if defender transfer to R3, then the game continues with P1 and Q1. We can see defender has two choices, and if defender can win one of them, she can win the game. While if attacker wants to win the game, he should win both of the two sub-games. That's what we want. If attacker wants to do a decrease operation on counter I, he needs to win another game. And in this sub-game, attacker can win if and only if the counter I is not zero. That's to say, defender can win when the counter I is equal to zero. That's a part of zero check. By the help of this technique, attacker would never try to do a decrease operation when the counter is already zero. Now, we are going to realize zero check. We can pop the top stack, which represents the state. This can be done in the transitions of defenders forcing. All the remaining stack symbols are the operations on the counters. Here, the state P can be seen as a criterion. As we can see, the red rules from state P, it can do two actions B for every stack symbol, no matter what the symbol is. And uh, for the state P2, when it meets uh, an increased operation on counter 2, it do one more action. If it uh, meets an, a, a decrease operation on counter 2, it do one less action. If it meets a reset operation on counter 2, it transfer to state P. X means other stack symbols. State P2 do the same with state P. Then we can ensure that these two processes are best similar if and only if the counter value is zero. Now we can ensure that attacker can only do the valid operations. The last thing is checking the coverability. In this example, the target state is S3. We can introduce some auxiliary states and uh, transition rules from S3. Suppose a uh, counter values x in the target configuration, we will try to perform x number of decrease operations. If all of these operations are valid, that means the target configuration is coverable. After these decrease operations, we can introduce a witness action for non-bisimilarity. So attacker can win if and only if the target configuration is coverable from the initial configuration. The reduction is completed. It's a conclusion. In this talk, we have introduced a reduction from the coverability problem of reset counter machine to the bisimilarity problem for pushdown automata. So the bisimilarity problem for pushdown automata is Ackman complete. Here are some remarks. The Ackman hardness result also holds for normed PDA. The normed means every PDA process can empty its stack. So it's a submodel of the general PDA. So the bisimilarity problem for norm the PDA is also Ackman complete. 
and uh, our reduction also gives a parametric complexity result when the number of control states is fixed as d then the problem is fd minus 1 hard here fd minus 1 is a complexity class beyond elementary and uh, there are some related open problems first when the number of control states is fixed there is a complexity gap between fd minus 1 and fd plus 4 and the second one is the complexity of deterministic pushdown automata it is an important problem that's all thank you for your time and wish you have a good day